Hello, this is Andrea, and I usually say welcome to my kitchen, but this is my backyard. This is the start of my garden build. I have two extremely large trees that block out all of the sun and one large tree that has a split down the middle that's also threatening damage to my house. All three of these would damage my house and my back garage. Excuse me for my voice. I'm feeling a bit under the weather and I'd like to get this video out to you guys. So this is my whole backyard, all three of the trees, and they need to go in order for me to have a garden. Here is after the trees are gone and after I had some dirt work done. More than some. Um, actually, I would say about 90% of my yard was tore up. Um, my dad helped with that. He had um, saw that with my older home that the drainage for water was actually everything was sloped to where water could run into my house rather than away from my house. Um, also with the trees um, and the stumps being ground there was lots of spots where there was now um, divots in. This is around the front of my house and that is the only grass that I have left. It's time to start making my raised beds. I got these on Amazon. I think that they were about $60 each. So far, I really do like them. And the instructions really weren't that bad. I was surprised at how little instructions there were, but once you get going, it's easy to figure out.
right, now it's time to lay down the weed fabric. This is a lot of measuring and putting my vision and my head out into reality. Um, I did this a little bit earlier than when I had originally anticipated, but the ground was was dry, so I took advantage of that time and had this laid out and my son helped. This was quite stressful for me because teenage boys aren't all that attentive and aren't worried about attention to detail like I am. So he had been waiting to use that butane torch for a long time. So he was willing to help at least to use that butane torch. And once we got going, um, it went pretty well. I'd put the stakes in most of the way, then he'd come by, come around and found them in. And I also made a last minute decision to have the weed fabric be a little bit wider that it's as long as I had it anticipated but have it be a little bit wider than I had originally anticipated. So here is my back garage. It's actually my son's garage. Here are the bags of soil that I bought for my raised beds. Um, the Miracle Grow regular is all that I could find in my area. They have a miracle Grow organic, but I'd have to drive over an hour and a half away to get that. Um, so this is 600 bags. No, not 600. I keep saying that. It is 60 bags to fill my three raised beds. We're going to haul them in my son's little red wagon from when he was tiny. My parents bought that for him. He's the only grandchild. So, we get to keep it. I 
considered buying a gorilla cart or even a wheelbarrow, but the cost on those is so high and I would use it literally two, three times a year. So I'd rather use what we have and just, just use that. Sorry, I'm out of breath. My son will load them up from there into the wagon and I will put them, pull the wagon down and put them in the raised beds. At least that's the plan. We'll do three bags at a time. That'll be a, 20, a total of 20 loads. Um, I was holding down each bed. I was holding down each bed over the past week with, um, with one bag of soil on the supports to hold them down because I knew I wasn't going to get to it until today is Saturday. So, um, yeah, let's get started. I'm excited, but it also seems very daunting to me. So, let's get started.
All right, a little ways below the surface, I am adding this Fox Farm potting mix. This stuff is like $30 a bag and I've heard very good things about it, um, how well things grow. Um, so I'm adding this about right where the roots will be. At least I thought. It could have went in a little bit deeper. Um, but I'm just trying to evenly spread it. And I talked to my son about how to evenly spread it. It's a bit unwieldy. But we do get it done. Can you do it? Can you do it? What I want you to do is, okay, I want you to like dump half of the bag here and half the bag here. Things are all three, okay? And then I'll spread it out. You, you can, can do, do it. it. No, I guess. This is where my son dump all the is being a typical teenager. He likes to say no to everything. Why don't you just dump in the middle? No, because it's already dumped in the middle. I want it in the corner. And this is the last bag per raised bed. And that's why I wanted it half and half. Chaga muffin? No. In hindsight, I wish that I would have put in one more bag each, the final three bags that I had purchased. They seem full here, but but they did settle a bit. This is at the very end of the day, and 
can tell possibly by my movements that my back is really hurting. I have chronic back pain and I can only take so much and you'll see a solution to that as I get planting and I made a really great purchase and I'm so grateful that it works on the yeah. weed fabric. Okay. I think I know the reason why um, the garage door uh, sometimes opens. Why? Either it's the shadow or it uh, doesn't uh, close enough. Either are a possibility because, uh, yeah, it's because uh, both of them are kind of true. Mm -hmm. Why did you go back up and Nah. It was about to, but I just uh, shut it with my foot. Can you bring those in the garage? Okay. okay. Me watch them. All right, and here is where we put in the T-posts. That will be the support for the tomato trellises. Um, I listened to my dad and got seven foot T-posts because I originally wanted eight foot ones, but look how they're, they're tall, but they have to go through the depth of the raised bed and then into the soil as well. So the amount that they're above the raised bed is only about four and a half feet. I wanted it about five and a half feet because my trellis netting is five feet tall. Anyway, um, sometimes you don't have to always listen to your dads. So they don't always know best, but it'll work. Okay, so today's the day. If you can see behind me, I have my raised beds and um, I'll be covering first covering those with weed fabric like I have on the ground um, so yeah today's the day um, I pre-watered these with a soaker hose that I bought um, which I, after I get everything planted, I'll be putting that on the top of the weed fabric. Um, now that I see how much they've settled, I'll show you right here, the corner of that bed. It's settled a bit, but I've seen other people's garden beds where it seems like they're only two thirds full. I don't know the point of that, but these are pretty deep. They're 18 inches. Um, sorry if the camera angle's weird. I'm doing kind of a selfie stick, so. All right, so um, first thing is I'm going to cut the top of the weed fabric. I think I will make slits for the T posts because I didn't want those on on the outside I wanted those to be on the inside and they couldn't go flush up against the side because I didn't want to tear through the um, the garden bed so um, all right um, also by the way these are three foot by six foot by 18 inch beds so 
I will get going on um, cutting that weed fabric.
Here is my rolling garden seat. Um, it's basically an antique tractor style seat on wheels. Um, you can basically go forwards and backwards with it, which is fine when you have rows in a garden. It really helps my back. Um, bending over at an angle really really does a number on my back. Um, also, too, I like the raised beds because I'm not bending totally over. That has given me migraines in the past as well, so I'm definitely persevering besides the issues, as you'll see as we keep on going.
Okay, I hope you can hear me. It's really windy. I'm going to use this. Originally $16.96. I got it on clearance for $8. Yes, it's not organic. And maybe I don't even need it because this is the first year with all of this and it has fertilizer in it in the soil itself. But I have a feeling I'm going to regret it. Regret it if I don't. So I'll put a little jingle in there. This is Aroma Tomato. They got dry overnight. I think I'm going to crunch it, get it down. I don't know, maybe next one I'm gonna shake it out a little bit. Roma one. Okay, another aroma. I had put my first time using them, I put my soaker hoses on the soil this morning before I put the weed fabric on. And right here is really wet. A shape. There, that's a good one getting deep. This is a Hungarian heart. All of these, well, most of these, majority of these seeds are from Baker Creek Seed Company, rareseeds.com. This one's a Hungarian heart. It's not a true Roma or paste. It may be classified as a paste tomato. That's what it looks like to me. That's why I wanted to try them.
And I cannot see. Can't see. All right. Wish that one was deeper. Oh well. Hungarian heart. Hungarian heart.
All right, let's take a look at the garden. Excuse my voice. I got a head cold all of a sudden. Today is a Monday. I got these planted Saturday and Sunday. There they are. I'll start with the tomatoes because that's what I did first. Here is Roma, Roma. This one is Hungarian Heart. This one is Hungarian Heart. Hungarian Heart. Amish Paste. Oh, Amish Paste and Amish Paste. The Hungarian Heart, they aren't listed as a paste tomato, but they look like it. Amish paste, Amish paste, Comstock. I think these were kind of a, I can't remember. I think they were kind of a dual purpose tomato, um, a good slicer plus a good sauce tomato. These two right here are Cherokee purple. I know that these are um, slicing tomatoes, but um, I figured that the dark color in sauces would help make that be a rich sauce. This one's a Bonnie Best. I planted those last year and they were a good um, slicing tomato with not too many seed cavities. These down here, um, I need to figure out the netting. This is a Bonnie's Best. This one is a Woods Brimmer. I planted that one last year as well. A good slicer, but also not too watery. This one is a Siberian Early. That's one that I got in a seed exchange from a YouTuber. And this one is a Gazante. And this one is a Gazante. The Gazante were, have like, they kind of look like miniature pumpkins, but red. Um, and those look like they were a firm flesh. It had some seed cavities so that they didn't look too wet. Um, and I will be fixing this netting so it's pulled taut. I will need to do some zip ties to the T-posts. The T-posts are in there. Look at how nice and even those are. Um, this middle post is crooked. That's why the poles are all wonky like that. And I'll need to take my hacksaw and trim down those poles. Probably didn't need that middle T-post, but I just wanted to make sure that the tomatoes were supported because I knew that there'd be a lot of tomatoes in each bed. Then we'll go with the peppers. Down here are the hot peppers, and then we go into the sweet. So this one is a Tabasco. And unfortunately, last summer, I had a beautiful Tabasco plant, lots of little peppers on it. it took all summer, I mean all, all summer. Um, we went back to school and work 
and I closed on my house. Then I was moving and it went to waste because those were at my aunt's farm and I just could not get out there. Grande Jalapeno, this one was shaded out probably by this one next to it, another Grande Jalapeno. Um, this one, this one is a jalapeno as well. And these two are Sugar Rush Peach. I heard a lot about those last summer. Um, the Tabasco, I think I'm going to turn into red pepper flakes, probably. Um, the jalapeno, um... I just add a little bit of that when I want a spicy dish. Um, these are, this one is a bull nose bell. This one is a lipstick pepper. So only one, two, three, four, five, six hot peppers, and that's going to be probably more than enough. I'll probably end up turning a lot of those into um, red pepper flakes, things like that. Um, this one is a Cal Wonder Bell, Cal Wonder Bell. This one is a bull nose bell bull nose bell this one's edgevarsky 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 lipstick pepper the bull nose and the lipstick lipstick got mixed up because when i was planting these in march um i didn't know how i would do the beds I didn't have that planned out. Um, I'm a person I need to see it, so um, I just last minute decided that this end would be sweet peppers and then at the very end would be hot. Oh yeah, um, actually this bed probably gets the most sunlight because um, that one's starting to get shaded, but I thought that down there would be more sunlight than here. Anyway, um, so ended up with lipstick there. Um, poblano, 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 Anaheim, 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 Anaheim. The poblano and Anaheims, those are, um, to hopefully, hopefully replace the little jars of green peppers. Um, I, I don't know how I would do it, but I probably not can those. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, plus I don't have too many of the tiny jars, but anyway, um, that's my thought on those. And I'd probably throw in, you know, it'd probably be a mix of all of the sweet peppers. Um, last week, some of the peppers had started um, blooming, started to have little flowers on them. And I plucked those off because I need them to worry, now I need them to worry about establishing their roots into the soil um and yeah um the tomatoes do not look hot but that is because they were really overgrown they could have been planted probably two weeks ago um and they were starting to get dried out i would water them every other day then I would water them every day and they were starting to get really dried out. So um, that's why they're not looking too hot. Um, we're supposed to get rain every day for about 
close to the next week. Um, my grass needs it too in order to take out, well, we took out the trees. As you probably saw either in an early vi earlier video or in way earlier in this video, we took out the trees. Um, there's my son splitting some wood. He likes to do that as a hobby. Um, so one tree was here, actually about here where that scrape is. And another tree was about here and huge and then way over there I want to say excuse my neighbor's horrible house, but I can't do anything about it. Anyway, um, so I took the trees out and my dad saw that against the house that the soil was, this is my back garage, that the soil was, um, running down. I'll show out here, out front. The soil had settled so that water would run into my house instead of away. So as you can see here, the soil is built up and it goes down to here where it's kind of rocky and then it it flows down and so he went all around also cleaning up parts of the trees i paid to have the trees done and um cleaning up with the trees and all of that it tore up a lot of my grass. This is all the grass that I have left. Um, so he reseeded and I have been spending every day that it doesn't rain. These little bits of grass are from seed. Every day that it doesn't rain, I spend um, watering. And now it's nice that the grass is coming up but it is quite messy and muddy and annoying but joys of home ownership right all right um i'll give you one last shot of the back here so there is my garden so far. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the middle in between the plants because I'm going to prune my plan is to pr prune the tomatoes quite heavily um, so their footprint isn't at least down below isn't going to be much bigger than what it is hopefully. I know I planted a lot packed in there but it's the way it is but down the middle there's room I'm not sure. Um, I think towards the far end, in the middle, I'm going to plant maybe a butternut squash and have that, the vines trail on the side and over to the back. So, um, so yeah, and I'll do soaker hoses all back and forth, back and forth. I know that, um, the soakers they'll drip in between each of the beds I'm okay with that so all right